Imagine a scenario where your research involves interviewing children under five years old. How do you ensure that they are able to give informed consent to be part of your research? Or let's say on a separate occasion, you are researching the parenting behaviors of the parents of hospitalized children. You believe that when they are left alone, some parents harm their children. You have a video camera. Do you set it up and use it? Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sam, your online research guide and advisor. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about the ethical issues you may face during your research and how to deal with them. The first and the foremost issue or the ethical issue is the issue of confidentiality, where you have to keep your details of your participants confidential. This is most of research. You may be tempted to break this confidentiality. You may feel it is unimportant. You may feel that you will never get caught, but its use could threaten your sources. It could undermine your whole research project. Imagine you have interviewed children who have been uh, abused or you have gone to prison and interviewed prisoners on how they are being treated by the officials there. Now confidentiality becomes a strict protocol here. You have to maintain it. Diverging details about your sources will compromise your research project. Nobody will trust you as a researcher. So you have to make sure that you follow the protocol. Anonymity is often linked to the issue of confidentiality, especially in today's world where most of the data exchange is happening electronically. There are always dangers of hackers who gain access to the customer database. You have to make sure that not only you collect data, but also you store it in a safe manner, something that cannot be hacked. People should not be able to get access to private data. Maybe people have trusted you with their private data. So you have to assure to your research participants that this data will be kept protected. There will be no unauthorized access from hackers or lurkers online. This is the issue of anonymity where you have assured individuals or organizations that they will not be identifiable in your report or thesis, careful consideration may need to be given how you disguise them. For example, to refer to a university in a northern town of 150,000 rather gives the identity away. If you are quoting from interviews with people in a named organization, disguising people's identities as simply a woman under 30 or a manager is also inadequate. People may find out who you're talking about. For this reason, many professional associations and employers working in the social sciences have drawn up their own ethical guidelines or codes of conduct for researchers. You should try and get a hold of copy of the code of conduct that is relevant to your research area. For example, in the UK, the Economic and Social Research Council ask proposers to detail the ethical implications of their project. In addition, it may be a requirement in healthcare or social work that you submit your proposal to an ethics committee. And this is becoming very common for most universities and colleges. The function of the ethics committee will then become to consider whether your proposed research conforms to their ethical guidelines set out by the relevant professional body, institution or employer, and that it does not infringe applicable laws. When we talk about legality, it is your duty to report any illegal activities of which you may become aware in the course of your research. Maybe you are interviewing mental health patients. If any of these patients show an indication or reveal that they might, they are thinking of taking their lives, committing suicide, it's an ethical issue for you to reveal it. This is where you do not keep it confidential. You have to reveal it. You have to know where the legality versus the ethical issues. If you are a police officer, it is your duty to report any illegal activities of which you become aware of in the course of your research. The same applies to a lesser extent to certain other categories of employees such as social workers, fire officers. More generally, it could also be seen as an obligation shared by all citizens. In some circumstances where the infringement is a minor or occurred long time ago, you may be happy to overlook it, but this may not always be the case. If you are a member of a professional group, as many researchers ask, this imposes or assumes certain standards of conduct in your professional life. 
these may overlap into your research work particularly if you are conducting research among your fellow professionals you may need to think therefore about what you do if you discover what you believe to be unprofessional conduct during the course of your research what if you are part of a team researching issues of sexuality and you are using email to conduct interviews you realize that the male members of the team have greater access to men and the female members have greater access to women to help with validity your team decides that female researchers should interview male respondents and vice versa you log on but your new respondents decline to discuss issues with a member of the opposite sex you are worried that this will endanger the research project do you try again but this time change your name and pretend that you are the same sex as the respondents no you cannot hide this fact from the research participants you have to be ethical all right your research if it has highlighted unethical practices in your organization concerning the abuse of expense claims do you publish it what right do you have who gives you permission how do you go about publishing it this will all be there in the ethics code if you are doing it at part of your organization then of course we have the last bit participation are the people you are doing the research about the same people you are doing the research for and with the issue of involvement of different stakeholders will be of particular importance to some kind of research let me give you an example let's say you are an educator you are a lecturer who is wants to find out a student behavior so are you forcing your students to participate in research or do they have concern are you overseeing the research process are you the one observing then their behavior will be influenced by your presence or you are asking a mediator to oversee the research are you giving the students a choice where the students have the right to refuse and they will not uh, be harmed in any way if they refuse to be part of a research all right let's say you find a document on the internet that has done much of the background work for your topic the deadline for the completion of your project has passed do you include the relevant detail in your dissertation but omit the reference do you not give them credit of course you have to give them credit you cannot be unethical so i have taken these few different examples to explain what kind of ethical issues you may face remember ethical issues do not solely relate to protecting the rights and privacy of individuals and avoiding harm they can also relate to the methodological principles underpinning the research design for example those with social justice concerns will include the very topic of the research as part of their ethical framework by asking whether it raises socially responsible questions or has the potential to create a more just world in my future videos i'll show you other examples of ethical dilemmas for social justice research ethics have methodological implications in research on for with human beings especially where that research is explicitly intended to improve social justice an example is the use of control groups these are methodologically extremely useful if reputation is not possible thus they are widely used in botanical experiments in order to test the influence of a single factor on a population agencies and interpretation can be taken into account by the use of double blind test where neither the experimenter nor the subject know which is the control group or treatment for instance much medical research depends on the double blind use of placebo treatments the ethical problem for education is that methods depend on putting some subjects into a control group and deliberately giving treatment thought to be inferior so that better treatments can be tested so these are different issues that researchers will face make sure that you comply with the ethical guidelines of your university you are completely familiar with it because this will not only help you as a researcher but it will also help you to uh, address the ethical issues and people will be more accepting of your research thank you for watching this video and i look forward to hearing your comments and feedback